Hello everyone, bringing you another unboxing video today, taking a quick look at some newly arrived New Zealand kit. A uh, big thank you to Jonathan Hines over in New Zealand who's helped me pick out these bits and pieces and, and is always keeping an eye out for bits and pieces for me, which is very kind of him. Uh, it's excellent to be able to sort of expand on that um, uh, Commonwealth uh, theme and it's going to be good for doing some future comparison videos as well, hopefully. Um, so we'll, without further ado, we'll have a look at what's arrived. Okay, as is usual for these now, uh, to avoid undue noise and so forth on the video of opening everything up, uh, I've got the box open here, um, put this to one side, and have a look at what's arrived piece by piece. So, first thing we have here, uh, a couple of pieces of New Zealand uniform. Um, New Zealand made uh, green trousers, or greens. These are very similar to the Australian uh, design, which are them, in themselves very similar again to the British crossover belt design of, of jungle green trousers, uh, 1950 pattern. These are made in 1974, as you can see. Uh, very, very clear label there, um, big bold letters, uh, but essentially modified in, to be similar to the Australian design in that you have uh, belt loops here, um, which are not present on British 1950 pattern trousers. Um, back pocket there. Otherwise, very similar to 1950 pattern, as I say. They're very nice to have. Um, quite late dated, but uh, this essentially, as far as I'm aware, the same as worn in, in Vietnam by New Zealand troops. Uh, there's a shirt to go with those as well. And this, yes, is rather nice. It has the New Zealand uh, embroidered New Zealand titles on the uh, epaulets there, which is lovely. And you can see here, very similar to Australian manufacturer in many ways, different pocket design. Uh, but otherwise, uh, a green drill shirt, very similar um, in that regard. And again, you can see a very clear label there, and this one dated 1978. So some nice 70s uniform there, although, as I say, applicable you know, design, as far as I'm aware, was certainly around at the time of uh, the Vietnam War, 1960s. So a very useful thing to have. And a, another piece of the New Zealand, another piece of New Zealand DPM, in this instance, a combat smock. Uh, now this is labelled too, let's have a look in here. So you've got the instructions on the right there and the, the actual garment label on the left. 1986 um, Tracy Manufacturing Company Limited. Just for no other no other marking as to say exactly what it what it is. But very similar it seems to the British 1968 pattern. Um, the pockets are somewhat simplified. And obviously battle dress style buttons. But you've got the simple button collar there, the very long epaulettes coming up to the three buttons around the back there. Um, they have a, a pen pocket on the arm there. So, yeah, quite similar to the British 1968 pattern, um, it would seem. Very similar indeed, in fact, which makes sense, of course, uh, being a DPM smocker. Imagine that's partly where the inspiration came from. So that'll be an interesting comparison video to do in the future, perhaps. But another lovely piece of New Zealand DPM. I really like this DPM print. Um, it is somewhat similar, obviously, as you can probably see in the light there. It's similar to the British tropical pattern uh, in being a somewhat lighter and brighter colours than the uh, the temperate DPM. So, uh, yeah, that's a, a really, really nice thing. Um, nice to have some more New Zealand DPM. I really, really like the print. And final item, which I had to ask about uh, ahead of time so I'd be able to talk about this. Now, I do know what this is, but only asking i wouldn't have been able to guess if i got it straight out of the box this is a, a basher um, or hooch so a shelter basically uh made in nylon um and it's made in this odd experimental camouflage quite distinctively new zealand uh, issue and as you can see it's a mixture of sort of these random blobs of brown and dark green on a lighter green background with uh, brush strokes added as well so it's sort of a mix uh, in that regard quite interesting quite distinctive uh, type of camouflage uh, you can see this has a design as well here you've got two loops here which would presumably allow it to be strapped up and carried on the back of the belt uh, and this camouflage pattern uh, was not only used for um, shelters i believe it was also used for rain uh, garments as well rain rain jackets that sort of thing and uh, was around from the late 1970s to the early 1980s in a sort of a wide scale experimental uh, form. Uh, but obviously New Zealand eventually adopted DPM uh, as opposed to this. So a very interesting uh, bit of kit. 
um, and I say a nice surprise to get. Well, I did ask ahead of time what the what the surprise item was going to be because obviously I wanted to make sure I could talk about it a little bit in the video. Uh, but something we'll have a look at in more detail in the future when I have a chance to uh, open this up and uh, get it spread out. Uh, it'll be an interesting uh, item to have a look at in more detail. So there we are. Uh, very pleased with all of that. Really nice to have the New Zealand uh, greens shirt and trousers. And obviously another pair of trousers based upon British practice, which is always interesting to see. Uh, I like seeing other countries' developments on that sort of, you know, based on uh, on uh, another country's uh, uniform or equipment and so forth. And obviously in this instance, it's not surprising given the fact that both New Zealand and uh, Australian troops were uh, involved with British troops in the in the Far East um, in the post-war years. It's not surprising that their uniform uh, shared a lot of uh, similar features. And also to see the DPM. So... Post Vietnam, Australia obviously would continue off on its sort of its own path in terms of uniform and equipment design, and in some regards, New Zealand reverted back to British designs, certainly in terms of camouflage and so forth, and the introduction of DPM, and the combat smock is fantastic, and a very big thank you to Jonathan uh, for the um, basher in that unusual camouflage finish. Very kind of you to include that, so thank you very much indeed, and for the support and the help in getting these bits and pieces together. Um, obviously, if you like this sort of content, you like these sort of videos, and you'd like to see more of these items in more detail going forward, um, please do consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. Um, it's greatly appreciated, those who do. Uh, there is, of course, also, if you really like my uploads, there's a, a Patreon and a PayPal link down below if you'd like to support the channel. Uh, it's Again, greatly appreciated, and everyone who has supported the channel through those two methods, I really, really appreciate it. Thank you very much indeed for that. Um, there are also uh, social media. Uh, there's also social media down below linked as well, uh, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, all three of those linked down below should you wish to keep up with what's going on the channel on social media. And also there is a, an email address should you wish to contact me, but you're not really a massive social media user. There's that option as well down below, all in the description of the video. But that's everything I wanted to cover for now. So until next time, Bye for now.